okay so telnet and ssh both are the same things but one is secure and the other is unsecure way to access the devices okay how so let me go to the gns we can do this practice in packet tracer as well but i want to show you the real packet and everything so that's why i came to gns otherwise you can do there as well so i uh, grab here the switch and i need one pc so for, for pc i will drag this okay and don't worry about gns how is working and forget about fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and here i will connect to my loopback why i didn't pick the loopback so i need to configure the loopback interface i have to add here mm, okay sorry now it will show me the loopback actually i have create a loopback interface loopback interface is just for your testing if i go there because it's up all the time so i need them for testing purposes because if i didn't plug the cable so it will never up the same as if i don't have wi-fi so it will never come up so that's why i created this loopback interface how we can create so i will show you how to create this loopback interface okay so i have created loopback interface and ip assigned to this interface okay there is no ip so let me assign any ip to this interface suppose assign 1.1.1.10 suppose okay class a okay and it's okay so attend 10.1.1 and the same thing i will come here now i will connect this interface to uh, configure this here yeah? i think so i didn't add the sorry here and then loop back then add so it will come up here so now i will add switch interface to loop back okay Make sure this is the cable okay now let me go to the console we know how to go to console yeah just click okay so configuration interface pass it an x0 stage 0 let me assign ip to the same range like the one where there is what 10 here i will assign a zero don't worry we will assign this ip later on for time being i'm just showing you how telnet and ssh work and no shutdown okay so let me ping it's working or not 1.1.10 .1 it's the ip of my loopback interface so yeah it's working if i reply if i ping from my system to this switch cmd ping 1.1.1.1 so it's pinging yeah so we both have connectivity what is ping packet internet grouper this is a command which we are using for testing purposes to communicate with other devices so now we both are communicating these two devices okay so now how to configure telnet so the first thing is let me go to switch and configure telnet for telnet what i have to do so scan show you are bigger go to configuration we discussed yesterday line line vty this time yesterday we went to console if you remember this time virtual terminal because these are virtual so console was a physical so that's why we have only one physical interface outside so we use zero but here these are virtual so you can configure as many you want okay so i just want uh, zero to four means five connection so five people can connect remotely from any area okay so I went here and the same like here password one two three and the same like yesterday login is finish telnet is configured but for telnet we need enable mode password as well so enable password are secret we discussed yesterday so let me put the this is also enable password is one two three okay now telnet is configured how to check them go to any remote device on your LAN either you are on the internet so you can log in from anywhere click on putty on any other software here choose this to telnet because telnet is using 23 and type the ip of the switch this is the ip of the switch just open it will open it will ask so we put the password one two three if you remember enter so now i enter to the switch 
ah, okay this is the enable mode password so it's enable now i can do whatever i want okay so i log in remotely to this switch suppose i want to change the name from remote side suppose uh, ksa okay now if i go to the actual one so this is still switch but i do enter so it means someone remotely change this okay so telnet and ssh is for management purposes if you want to suppose your switches are in data center you cannot go all the time to plug the cable and sit there and do configuration first time is okay first time you configure by console just configure everything telnet ssh configuration and then sit down relax in your room and wherever in the organization and just so type the ip of the switch and from remotely area inside the building or outside the building if you have allowed outside so you can configure even from home i used to configure my university because i was in pakistan so i was used to configure I left the job so later on they told me that nobody is here so please remotely do all these things so I used to do till almost one year from remotely from here to configure their everything but now I left they changed the password and everything so remotely I used the putty and type the public IP of the my switch there and from here I was used to configure everything okay so the same things you can do at this one but is, is it okay clear yes, yes, yes. now the reason is Telnet is unsecure. Let me show you. Let me close this putty. I think so it's a, a bit. Okay. And let me record this interface. Whatever going for this interface. Start capture. So Wireshark will open. Wireshark will record everything passing on this interface. So let the Wireshark open. And okay, so the workshop is open. Now again, I will do telnet. I will open putty, type the password of the switch or username, and make them telnet. Open, type the password one two three, and then enable. The enable mode password is one two three and then i will run something show running configuration or whatever so now let me start the capturing it's enough now whatever again look at this telnet data it show me telnet telnet okay now i on the telnet i will right click and go to conversation sorry follow tcp stream now look at it show me clearly that you type a password 123 then you put enable then you type 123 then you type show running configuration and these are everything of the switch so anybody in the middle is here and he start a capture and he use any things for capturing i was just showing you for uh, wireshark so he know everything of you are doing between these two devices and even he know the password and username and he can log in and he can damage your everything through internet either locally okay so this is the reason telnet is unsecure we can see every packet everything is clear text okay is it clear yes okay so let me quit this and stop this one stop capture now i will configure ssh and do the same things so what is the difference between these two okay the next case is very easy line vty how many number you want to open just put the password okay you can do the same thing like here yesterday we done local passwords if you remember uh, line vty 0 to 4 login local you can do the same things here as well for local you need a username as well yeah username admin and password 123 user how many user want you can create mm, Ali and this time I will want to use secret 123 okay so now this time if I log into the switch it will ask not only ask me the password but the username as well so let me change to telnet 1.1.1.1 and open so it asked me the username so the username is Ali and the password is one two three 
enable and show sorry enable password as one two three as well so i can log it okay all right one thing more to add here we have also a banner as well after this we will do ssh okay banner if i type here banner So there are banner as well there are two type of banner mainly there are a lot of banner versus well, up to cc and there are two banner one is called login banner okay and the other is called motd login banner means whenever anyone anybody want to log in by telnet by ssh either by console means login so this banner will display there if nobody is logging this banner will never be there MOTD means message of the day. It will display all the time if there is login or not login. Okay, so let me do MOTD first. I type banner MOTD. After this, it say type any letter and finish with the same letter. So the middle words will be your banner. So suppose I start from one. Suppose either this one, one. Now I need my message here. This is. MOTD banner. Now I need to finish it with one. So it's up to you. Why? Any letter you start, you have to finish on that letter. Okay. Now let's come out here and check out. So look at. Yeah. Okay. This is the MOTD banner. Even though there is no login. Okay. So let me go and configure the other banner. Banner. banner login again you can type start with any letter suppose with end this is login banner and let me finish with the same letter and let's log out from here now you will see only MOTD because we don't have console login we don't have we didn't put anything so this is the difference between these two now if i log in if i put the console let's see line console zero yesterday we done yeah password one two three and login now see there will be the other login banner as well okay This is a MOTD banner and this is a login banner. So the login banner will only display if there is any login. Suppose if I login by telnet again, it will show me. This is a MOTD banner. This is a login banner. Okay, is it clear? So these are two type of banner. The MOTD we normally say hi, goodbye, I something message, good morning, good day, like this type. And this one is to give message to someone. Like, don't use this unauthorized access. This and this, like when we are watching English movies, so FBI warning. The same as like this one login banner. And we, we, you can put them like this star star star. I will show you my company one. They put them star star. Make them like stars in the middle. They put them like this. So it's up to you. Okay. Now let's move to the SSH. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah, the banner. Yeah, okay, right. Anything you can ask me in the minutes. Okay. Okay, SSH. So what is SSH? Secure shell. This is a secure version of Telnet. Okay. How to configure it? The first thing is you have to change your switch name. The switch name should shouldn't be switch. The router name shouldn't be router, and the firewall name shouldn't be firewall. Any other name you can give. So by chance my name is KSA. This is not the issue. Okay. This is. The first condition. The second condition is we have to create a domain name. Domain name is specifically just like Google.com. These are domain name because when you are creating SSH key, so it's need for that. That's why. So I will say IP domain name. Anything suppose test.com, either KSA.com. You can give anything. This is the first condition. The second condition is now we need a users you cannot say that only password for ssh you need a username as well the same like we say lo login local 
so here you need must username and password both not only password so i will say username i will create username admin with the password either the secret one two three two condition ip domain name username the third thing is crypto key generate we have to create the crypto key crypto key basically it will generate uh, Mm, two type of key public key and private key okay i will tell you some other time now rsa what is RSA? rsa basically these were three scientists or a mere shell or something okay so they create this so these three scientists create this uh, uh, create this key so that's why it's called rsa key okay now we need to assign them how means complicated one okay so it's up to you modulus i will say 1024 you can give a lot of means if you say here so you can give like this 360 200 but the more strong the more process required but the more it will be not you mean nobody can hack them so normally we use them every organization 2024 okay so it will create the keys the public key and private keys okay so it's now created okay cryptic key. after this we have to go to line vty the same virtual line 0 to 4 but here we will say transport input ssh if ssh is not working then telnet transport output ssh if ssh is not working then telnet okay is configure and the last thing is sorry if i get login local words to check the local users okay so ssh is configured we need a ip domain name then we create a crypto key after this we went to the line vty and we said transport input means transport we are using transport means the packet will be for ssh traffic the traffic will be ssh and the output will be ssh if ssh is not working by somehow there is some reason so then switch to stillnet because stillnet we already configured now again we have to check now let's see let me capture the packet what is the difference between ssh and telnet the configuration of telnet is as yes compared to ssh but ssh is more secure now let me log in by telnet sorry by putty 1.1.1.1 but this time not a telnet ssh okay open now this is the key it us me to copy the public key so i say okay yes first time it will ask you second time is saved okay now login as a i created admin user the password was 123 and the banner came in enable and the enable password is 123 and show running the same thing which i done as a telnet i done as a ssh now i will stop the packet and this time i don't need the telnet data i need the ssh data SSH right click follow TCP stream look at you can never understand anything this is the putty release don't waste the, that one this is the garbage data we done three command and look at it's created a lot of garbage data nobody can hack this and nobody know what the hell is this okay so that's why we are using SSH and every organization is configuring uh, SSH compared to telnet because ssh is more secure and the work of both have the same to log in remotely to configure the device okay is it clear okay right so let me go so that's why the telnet ssh and login banner the source address is coming in other also here you will understand clearly okay now let's go to our switch and start from switch as here okay so now we have how the switch learn mac address and aging time how the frame working how the frame flooding and how mac address table work okay so we will do first this and then we will move so let me stop this